Hello and welcome to this special Christmas edition of A-State Sports Take. I'm your host, Caleb Gullihorn, and today I am joined by Jordan Moore and Kobe Wood. And today we are going to be talking about the NBA naughty and nice list. So starting off with you guys, I want to hear your naughty list. Oh, I have a, a literal list here. I came prepared today. <laughs> I have a couple of rants I want to go, go over. First off, Kevin Durant's on my naughty list. He's leading mm. the league in technical fouls at eight. Only by one, like, one margin, though, because there, there's three players below him with seven, but still, KD, come on, like, just chill out a little bit. Just, you know, tone it down a little bit, man. I mean, I know you're passionate, but, like, come on, man. We're only 25 games into the season. You got eight techs. Just relax. Also, the entire Nets starting lineup, they're all on the naughty list. <laughs> I feel so bad for Indiana Pacers fans, you know, because – First off, to preface this, the whole Nets starting lineup and then some sat out versus Indiana. So if you're a Pacers fan or if you're in Indiana even and you're like a really big KD and Kyrie fan, Mom, Dad, I really want to go see the Nets. I want to see KD and Kyrie. Well, I mean, you're out of luck, I guess. You know, I paid $500 for these tickets, but nobody's playing. I mean, Cam Thomas had 30, but I feel so bad for those Pacers fans. So they're all on the naughty list. I mean, even if KD and Kyrie don't play – you're like, oh, well, I'll settle for Ben Simmons. <laughs> he didn't even play. So I, I, I guess it is what it is. Ben Simmons. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And also, while we're talking about sitting out, Kawhi Leonard, you're also on the naughty list. Mm, Just yep. play basketball, dude. I mean, like, he's the load management god. I mean, I get it. And if it doesn't, if he doesn't show up in the playoffs, it's really all for nothing. So, Kawhi, dude, just play basketball. Also, Chris Paul, you're on the naughty list. When are you not on the naughty list? Like, <laughs> you elbowed Jose True. Alvarado. I mean, you're a flop, you're, you flop all the time. Just chill out, all right? Like, just tone it down a little bit. Let's, let's not start fights and then wonder why the whole Pelicans team is retaliating. <laughs> let's, let's not do that. Oh, also, if it's true you did what you did to Kim Kardashian, you're also on the naughty list for that. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, you might be lying about that. So, Rudy Gobert, you're on the naughty list. Mm. Uh, you're a poison everywhere you go. Uh, you're really not that great. <laughs> Uh, the Timberwolves had a good thing going, and then you showed up, and Anthony Edwards can't uh, drive into the paint anymore. Gave up seven first-round yeah. picks for you as well. Not yeah, really yeah. Good you're, you're kind of a disappointment. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Draymond Green, we haven't forgotten what you did over summer to Jordan Poole. Uh, I doubt Jordan Poole has forgot either. <laughs> I wasn't going to let you slide. I wasn't going to let that slide. Uh, so you're on the naughty list this season. Also, you all have a 14-13 and 13 record. In the West, uh, so I'm going to chalk that up to you ruining the chemistry, punching your mm. teammate. Uh, I'm, I'm going to punch in right there because on my naughty list, I actually have the entire Warriors team whenever they play on the road. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, yeah. The Warriors are averaging 114 points per game on the road, and they're shooting the ball decent and playing above average defense. But it's the last final, the final five minutes, the last stretch of the game, and they just collapse. I mm -hmm. mean, they, ha they have a record of two and eleven on the road this year, which is the worst in the NBA, and they're not even in the playoff pitch right now. And not a good look for the reigning champions. And also, if you happen to be a Warriors fan and you're watching them come to your hometown, thinking you're going to watch the literal, like the Golden State Warriors no. in dynasty, you're actually going to watch the Santa Cruz Warriors, uh, their <laughs> G League affiliate. Uh, Devin Booker, you're on my naughty list. Just shut up, dude. Just like stop talking. <laughs> You're, you're so cocky, okay? Sometimes you back it up, sometimes you don't back it up. Just chill, man. Like, honestly, this, the whole Suns team, they're just unlikable right now. I'm sorry. True. Mm. Devin Booker, yeah, just, just stop talking. That's all I got to say. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, not actually in the league right now, but he might make an appearance, Emo Udoka. Just keep it in your pants. Uh-oh. Mm. <laughs> That's, we're not going to let that slide either. I feel bad for the whole – uh, all the females in the Boston Celtics organization. Just need I say more, Ima, Ima Udoka. Just yep. keep it in your pants, man. Hey, you know. It's not that, that hard. That, that was a whole list, and that was all good. That, that was all some good naughties. Now, now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You said NBA at the beginning, but I'm going to throw in some NFL stuff, okay, to, to kind of split up you two and doing a bunch of NBA stuff. So let's talk about some NFL naughty players. I've got a player and I've got a coach that I think deserve to be on the naughty list, and let's talk about the coach first. That is Nathaniel Hackett is on oh the naughty list. Gosh. Dude came into this organization coming from the Packers, one of the 
best offenses in the NFL, leaves that team, comes in, they're like, oh my gosh, this team's going to be amazing. Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, Russell Wilson, Javante Williams, they've got all of these players. What are they going to do with it with an offensive-minded head coach? And let me tell you what they've done with it. Be eliminated from the playoffs. Let's ride. <laughs> Broncos country, let's ride straight to our couches for this offseason because, oh my goodness, Nathaniel Hackett has come in and hurt this team more than I can think of anybody else. I mean, that was that was a terrible signing, and I thought that he should have been gone months ago, but here he is coming to the end of the season. They just got eliminated from playoff contention, and uh, he's still here. Um, and Nathaniel Hackett 100% deserves to be on the naughty list. No and doubt. then let's talk about our player on the naughty list. And I'm going to go with, uh, with somewhat of an interesting pick. Give me, oh, I don't know, how about Matthew Stafford on the naughty list for this year, just coming off of an NFL championship. And he comes in and he does the unthinkable and sucks. He goes out with a concussion. He's healthy now, still on IR because they don't want to play him because the season's been such a failure. And why? Because he was completely inadequate for the first couple of weeks of the yeah. season. He could not get anything going with that offense. He didn't know how to hand the ball off. He didn't know how to get the ball from his center. There were so many fumbles in the backfield. Matthew Stafford took a huge step back and I'm a huge Matthew Stafford guy which is why he is being put on my player naughty list yeah watching him I, I love Matt Stafford been a big fan of him since he was at Georgia and stuff but you could kind of just see he looked satisfied coming mm -hmm. into the season he got a Super Bowl ring he finally had a winning season and got his recognition that he's been deserving while he mm -hmm. was in Detroit but he hasn't even looked remotely the same I mean I, I doubt he was this bad in high school like <laughs> They, I don't know what's going on with Matthew Stafford. There's a reason they brought in Baker Mayfield to replace him, and I think it's going to be a new window. And the Rams Super Bowl, everything that they gave up for it is going to come back and haunt them for many years to come. Oh, yeah, for sure. And all they're doing is giving the Detroit Lions, who've looked pretty good, um, a better pick yeah. in the draft this coming year inside the top five right now. So, Matthew Stafford, you have made the naughty list. Bad boy. Bad, very bad Cole boy. Pulling your stocking. <laughs> and, and there's one individual that's on my naughty list, and I hope he's listening. Reggie Bullock. Listen he's here, man. Listen <laughs> here. You were supposed to be this great three-point shooter, this good lockdown defender, and you are nothing. You're neither one of those things, and you're, you're a big-time disappointment in Dallas right now. Honestly, I don't even think we could get a slice of apple pie for you in a trade at this point. Ugh, at Reggie Bullock, I don't even like want to say anything else other than you are the first name highlighted on my naughty list. Extra cool for you. Extra. <laughs> now, moving on from our naughty list, let's go in and talk about the nice list. Who are some guys that you've seen that are kind of catching your eye and doing good this well, year? Well, in the NBA, uh, at the top of my nice list, well, actually, in no particular order, but this guy's first. Tyrese Halliburton is leading mm -hmm. the league in assists. I feel like that's guess. just the ultimate yeah, nice category. He has 11 assists a game. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Plus, he's also just a nice guy in general, but uh, he's got to be there uh, at, the, at 11 assists per game. Um, also, Giannis. Mm -hmm. And do I really even need to say more? He's just... He's the nicest guy in the NBA. He gives you dad jokes at the end of the game. Ask that Philadelphia 76ers worker if, if Giannis is the nicest yeah, guy in the league. Yeah, but Giannis is okay. Well, Giannis is trying to get this his shots ladder, up, right? You're doing your job. I don't like that. Yeah, but that was after. Well, we won't get into it. But that was after you <laughs> went to the locker room, got a new ball, and they came back. They were just trying. They were just being trifling, man. <laughs> but he literally walks around with a book full of dad jokes. How can you not like Giannis? And if you know his story and his upbringing, he's one of the nicest guys in oh, the NBA. Yeah. Also, Stephen Curry, he's also along those lines. He's just a nice guy, but he brought Golden State a championship this year. So he has to be rewarded this Christmas time by being on the nice list. He brought him a championship, his fourth ring. They really had no business going to the finals, but they did it. They beat the Celtics, and he's still playing great, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, also, I'm just going to say the whole Kings franchise mm. is on the nice list because I don't know who to attribute their success to. Light the beam, baby. Yeah. It's a messy metal. I don't know if it's Mike Brown <laughs> or if it's just the team chemistry or the front office. So I'm just going to say the whole Kings is on the nice list because they've given 
everybody in Sacramento something to look forward to. They've rejuvenated their franchise. Mm -hmm. Mike Brown's doing a really good job in Sacramento, and that's something that I did not think I would say. Mm -mm. We're only 25 games into the season, but I can I expect them to make the playoffs, and that that alone will be a great success for the Kings. I do expect them to make the playoffs. They're exciting. They have time. an identity yeah. now, and they're they're actually fun to watch. Oh, Look yeah. forward to the Kings. Uh, also, LeBron James is on my nice list. Mm-hmm. Research shows me he's the most charitable athlete uh, of all time. He's, he donates uh, $100 million to over seven organizations. So that being said, you got to be on the nice list if you're the most charitable athlete. Also, he, he built a public school in Akron, Ohio. Yep. Mm-hmm. He's doing a lot for his community. The last guy I have on my nice list had to sneak him in there, uh, John Morant. Because he's just the most electrifying NBA player. Wow. He's the reason I get out of bed every morning. <laughs> I mean, he's so fun to watch. Uh, and talking about, like, what he does for the city, he's given Memphis something to really look forward to for once, like championship aspirations. Uh, just the most electric NBA talent, pure entertainment. And for that reason, he's on my nice list. Yeah, for sure. I like that list, man. You know, big Grizzlies fan here too. And uh, you know, I'd I'd go forward and I'd put uh probably uh some some more Grizzlies players on that nice list because I think they play really good as a team mm-hmm. more so than just John Moran, even though he is electric. But um getting into the NFL, let's talk about a coach that I want to put on my nice list, and that is going to be Mike. McDaniel. You look at that Dolphins team, every single week there's like a new clip coming off of him on the sidelines just talking to his players. And he just seems like the jolliest, most happy guy in the world. He's got a great mind for football. He's a great coach. Um, What he's been able to do with this Dolphins team is crazy because we were looking at this team like is Tua really going to be able to give the ball to these two receivers? Is the running game really going to work out? Is this? And you know the running game hasn't panned out like everybody thought it would but some of these plays that he's able to draw up and get out there and uh, you know his use of the the clock, his use of just being able to get out there and hype up his team is something that I've never seen before. Yeah. He's a great encourager and he's a great head coach, which is why Mike McDaniel has to make my sports nice list as a head coach because he is just doing something that I haven't seen in a long time. And then my final spot on the nice list, I want to do this as an apology almost. Going into the season, the team of the Las Vegas Raiders declined this player's fifth-year option. They said, you know what? We don't want you anymore. They draft Zamir White in the offseason, which is his literal replacement. But I'm going to put Josh Jacobs on my nice list. He's looked like um, the best back this he year. He has. He's looked like the best pure running back in the NFL this season. He's done wonders for my fantasy football team, which is another reason why I'm putting him on my nice list. But, I mean, whenever you look at it, he was down in the dumps. He was, he was not having a good time this offseason didn't get paid like he should have and all of a sudden he comes out and he performs this year Josh Jacobs I'm sorry you're on my nice list and the final player that I'm put on the nice list here is uh Brock Purdy I mean dude Uh, coming in Mr. Irrelevant deemed at the beginning of the season and now he is probably the most relevant player in the NFL right now he's coming into a team that has Super Bowl ambitions in the 49ers and he came in and he looked fantastic on Sunday he looked good closing out the game two weeks ago and man Brock Purdy Going from Mr. Irrelevant, nobody cares about him. Last pick in the draft. It's never been anything in the history of the NFL. All of a sudden, Brock Purdy, you're on my nice list for what you've been able to do with this offense and this team. Oh, yeah. He may be on the on the great list, like the perfect list. <laughs> like, you've been such a good boy this year. You're getting double presents. <laughs> uh, I got two guys on my nice list, one of them being Kyle Kuzma. Mm. I mean, Kyle Kuzma this year. Why? Nobody talks. Nobody's talking about him. Mm-hmm. Over his last six games, dude's averaging 25 points a game. He's averaging 20 points on the season. I mean, he's looking like a guy that was actually supposed to mm-hmm. – what the Lakers fans, oh, this dude's a great young piece. He's going to be so good. I mean, what we've been hearing about his potential, he's tapped into that now. He's a third mm-hmm. option in Washington behind Bradley Bill and behind Tingus Pingus. <laughs> Can't stand that dude. He's on my naughty list. <laughs> oh. Got me sidetracked. I'm talking about Kyle yeah. Kuzma, right? Okay, yeah. He's averaging over 20 points, being the third option on, on a Wizards team. I mean, they may not be winning a whole lot, but they've won some games this year, and a lot of that has been because of the production of Kyle Kuzma. Mm-hmm. And then another guy, I've been waiting for him to get his opportunity to shine in the NBA, get some valuable minutes, and that's Bo Bowl. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I see that. A, a unicorn kid. I mean, he, 
He's a lot, a lot like this Victor Wimanyama kid coming up, you know, in this, in this year's draft. Coming out of Oregon, I mean, seven foot four, giant player, crazy skill set, and he's finally tapping into that potential this mm -hmm. season with the Magic. And he's different, you know. Yeah. Oh. He, he's a different watch than all these other guys. Absolutely. Sure. All right, that's all the time that we have for this segment, and we will be right back with some more A-State Sports Talk after this. ASU TV, shows like Red Wolf Roundtable, ASU TV News, Westside Football, and more. Gain real life experience while doing what you love. Get involved with ASU TV today. Here to deliver the latest news on A-State sports, ranging from football, basketball, baseball, and more. I'm your host, Tristan Harlan, alongside your other host, Cooper Mouder. Red Wolf Roundtable is your local sports source. Tune in to Red Wolf Roundtable to get your fix on sports talk and news. this special Christmas edition of A-State Sports Take. I'm your host, Ella Jane Britt, and in this segment, I'm joined by Syed and Easton John. In this segment, we'll be talking about who's the Rudolph of the sports world, who's the one that's making the sports world change, and honestly becoming one of the top. So, personally, in my opinion, the person that I'm going to uh, choose over here is, this is a guy who actually came in this sport and make this sport known to everyone. And many of you might not agree with me, but I think it's Conor McGregor in UFC. So the reason why I chose Conor McGregor is because many of you, the people might not like Conor McGregor. Even I'm the one who does not like Conor McGregor. But I'll be honest with you, um, before Conor came in the UFC, I had very less knowledge about UFC. People who used to watch UFC were, you know, uh, not having that much craze about US UFC. Um, then he came in and the vibe that he brought into this sport, the kind of, you know, the the overall energy that he brought and apart from that the earning that he did for this sport is incredible like every single fight um, of his was to used to be one of the biggest fights in the era of UFC he started on with fighting um, the Jose Aldo for, that was his first fight in the champ uh, for the championship and he knocked him out in 13 seconds mm -hmm. like literally 13 seconds and Jose Aldo was a champion who was undefeated in seven years he had so many fights and he defeated all of his opponents and in 13 seconds, he defeated him with just one punch. Um, he has been defeated later on in his fights, but still, till this date, he is the fighter who earns the most in the UFC. He was the 2022 and 2021's most earned athlete overall, in com you know, in compared to all of the sports. So my pick would be Conor McGregor, easy. That's a great pick. I was not expecting that. Yeah. That is a great pick. I mean, you think about, you know, what the attention yeah. that he brought to the UFC and his just his swagger, his attitude that he brought to the UFC, yeah. man. I mean, that's that's he is a character. Yeah. And I was honestly, I watched that fight where it lasted 13, 13 seconds, seconds. And I was ready. I was so excited to watch. And then it's just a wham right to the canvas. And I was like, I was not expecting so that at all. I remember that day because um, because in my country that even used to come in the morning, like in 7 a.m. in the morning, and I had to go to my college and I was waiting for that fight to come. So I was just, you know, awake throughout the night just to see that fight. And I really badly wanted Jose Aldo to win because the kind of um, the, the scene that he creates before the fight, the, the trash talking that he does and goes into the minds of the opponent, I wanted him to beat Connor badly. Mm -hmm. But when I saw that 13 second knock knockout, um, it was a yeah. speechless. And then he became two times champion as well. He was the exactly. first UFC fighter who was two uh, champions in two divisions, like the featherweight and the lightweight. So I think he's one of the top 
athletes right now who yeah. changed the sports completely. He had to, and then he went to boxing as he well. He went to boxing. He fought uh, um, Mayweather. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. One of the biggest fights uh, yeah. that I've ever seen. And yeah, yeah. I... I like that pick. I was not yeah. expecting that. I'm glad you didn't tell me before because <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't have reacted like this. Yeah. But my pick, and this is going to come to a surprise for a lot of people, is my man from Kansas City. The guy, let's do it with me, everybody. Do the tomahawk chop. Oh! Patrick Mahomes has changed the quarterback position. I mean, you think of Rudolph, yeah. right? He, what do you guys think when you hear Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? Um, not that much because I was not um, too much into it. Okay. But yeah. <laughs> Ellie, <Someone. laughs> what, Ellie, what do you think? I need a response. <laughs> when I think of Rudolph, I think of someone who yet yeah, was the underdog, but mm -hmm. they ended up making their way through to where they were at the top of something. Exactly. This man was not, e was not even talked about in the draft. Well, he was overshadowed by Deshaun Watson and Mitchell Trubisky. And this man comes out of the gate, sits his first season, then comes out of the gate and surprises everybody. Left-handed throws, no-look passes. I mean, this guy is a different man. This is a different quarterback that we've seen in the NFL, period. Like, this guy is changing how the quarterback position is played. He's persuading a lot more people to take more risks as a quarterback. And just think of the things that he's done. I mean, last or yesterday against the Broncos, he does a pass where he isn't even looking at Jared McKinnon, and he says he just takes the risk and not even like I don't even know what you call it. You a shuffle pass? Uh, I don't know. But he gets it to McKinnon, and they go score a touchdown. And if they wouldn't have scored that touchdown, they probably would have lost that game. But Patrick Mahomes has changed the. The, the way the quarterback position is played in the NFL. He's one of my favorites, and I'm not just saying that because I'm from Kansas City, and I've been a Chiefs fan for the longest time, and I, I'm not just saying that because the, of that. Um, but it, <laughs> what So uh, I personally think, like, over here it's not about, you know, um, I respect the opinion. It's not about, you know, arguing on an opinion. I respect what you think about it. But personally, what I think over here is that if you talk about an athlete and you talk about, like, in the sports world, mm -hmm. like, I had no knowledge about Rudolph, to mm -hmm. be very honest. Mm -hmm. And many people, I'm sure, up, uh, outside USA do not know much about him. Yeah. But if you talk about uh, Connor, I'm not comparing, I, I again say I'm respecting your opinion. Oh, yeah. I understand, you know, from where you are coming from as well. But the reason why I chose Connor was because he's the person that is known around the world right now. Mm -hmm. Like the entire, even you knew about yeah. him. Everyone knew, knows Connor McGregor. And if you talk about an entire sport, like he has made an, an impact, like he, like I said before, he was the athlete who has earned the most money. Um, and he fought outside UFC, he did the boxing as well. And apart from that, the kind of personality he has, like wherever he goes, the kind of aura that he brings it, the energy that he brings it, um, People are crazy for him, especially the Irish fans. They are crazy yes, for him. And I, they are. Not uh, maybe not right now, because they kind of. I've heard the Irish fans are sort of taking a dislike to Conor McGregor, but yes, they do support. They supported him all the way. When so it's the, it's it's just like that because now he has not won a fight since like three two years. So that's why people go you know against you, but you cannot deny the fact that what he brought to the sports. Oh yeah, like I, what he brought in the UFC. I don't think I am a fan of Habib. Mm -hmm. I am a big fan of him, oh, and yes. I was very happy when Conor was defeated. Again, I would say that, but still, I wouldn't say that Khabib brought that change in the UFC. Mm -hmm. And I think Conor, the personality that Conor has, world knows him about, about because of that personality, because of that energy and that trash talking that he brings into the, you know, the, to the stage. He goes into the mind of the opponents, and he does. I, I remember one of his interview. Uh, then the the time when he became the champion, the two time two ten, um, two division champion, and he he was talking pretty much trash about his opponent before the fight, and then he knocked him out as well. Mm -hmm. So what he said in the interview was he said that I would like this uh, moment to apologize, and then he said to absolutely, absolutely nobody. nobody. <laughs> to absolutely nobody. Devil champs apologizes to absolutely nobody. Yeah. And like these kind of instances that he has brought into the game in the entire sports world. It's amazing. Again, I would say, yeah. like, you know. And if you think of Rudolph, you think of him, you know, he came into the in, into their group, you know, and he was sort of a misfit. He didn't, he didn't fit in. 
But then once he started to gain in the group, he became a leader. Yeah. And, you know, Conor McGregor was that misfit guy that would act a little silly. Yeah. But once he got in the ring, he meant business. And that's why I think Patrick Mahomes is because Tyree Kill even said it. Like, he was like, who is this guy? Like, this is the guy that you guys want to run the organization? Like, this guy. The guy that's just throwing it and not even doing, like, court yeah. – the quarterback, how the quarterback position is played. Tyreek Kill's like, who is this guy? And then he comes in his first season and takes leadership, and he leads his team to the AFC Championship game. Unfortunately, a coin flip decided. Tom Brady won. Yeah. But then the next year, he took him to the Super Bowl and beat the powerhouse defense that the 49ers had. And that is all I have got to say about that. See, I th when I think of a Rudolph, I think of somebody who – has worked their way to be able to get to receive those types of honors, not somebody who necessarily, like, yeah, having come with athleticism, that's great, but I like to see what work they put in to become one of the greatest there is. Mm -hmm. And do you, like, I personally believe, like, with Conor McGregor, si like, silence is a killer. I feel like that. So do you feel like trash talking kind of takes him in a different route of being a Rudolph? That is a good point because he is so loud. You know, yeah. Rudolph was this sort of – like low key, sort of came in the league. So, so my so I would say is it's about greatness and it's about a person who changes the game. Mm -hmm. so in terms of greatness, in terms of the greatest of all time, I wouldn't say Conor McGregor is because of his trash talking and the the kind of person he was. But you can po um, put Rudolph in it because of his personality, his you know mm -hmm. silent behavior. But I wouldn't say that. But it's about changing the game completely. And that trash talking that he did, he had a game plan because of it. His, you know, his idea was to get into the minds of the into the fighters, and then take advantage of it. And he d he did make use of it, uh, and he did pretty good. And that is the reason why there were so many people watching his fights. Mm -hmm. There were so many, you know, um, w people looking into his fights, watching eagerly co for Conor McGregor to come. So yeah, that's yeah. And to go on your point about the silent killer, you know. When the Chiefs traded up to the 10th pick in the draft, everybody thought that, you know, the, the, the Chiefs were going to take Deshaun Watson or some other quarterback. They were not expecting Patrick Mahomes to go to the Chiefs at all. It was a surprise. And then, yeah, that, if I had to go on your point about being a silent killer, you know, being that subtle, quiet person, yeah, I would, I would say that. I yeah. think it depends on the game as well. Like, UFC is a kind of game that you need to come up and you need to show yourself. You need to show your dominance. Mm -hmm. And trash talking is, I think, one of the way to just show that you are there, you're present. So I think it depends on the game as well. Yeah. See, I've always been like that too. Like, I just agree that, like, I personally, as an athlete, I was never one to open my mouth and say something to somebody. Mm -hmm. I always was like, let me show you what I'm capable of, and I don't even have to open my mouth to show you. So that's the way mm -hmm. I go about that situation. But look, I agree with you. I also I am the person who wouldn't, you know, do the trash talking or all I of that. I do think he has set records, though. I think that's something that's amazing. But, yeah, he used it in a way that he changed the entire perspective of UFC. Even I don't like him. That's what I said. I don't like him because of his personality, but he did it. You can't deny that. That's the fact. Well, that's all we have for this segment. We'll be right back with more of the A-State Sports Take right after this. ASU TV, shows like Red Wolf Roundtable, ASU TV News, Westside Football, and more. Gain real life experience while doing what you love. Get involved with ASU TV today. Here to deliver the latest news on A State sports, ranging from football, basketball, baseball, and more. I'm your host, Tristan Harlan, alongside your other host, Cooper Motor. Red Wolf Roundtable is your local sports source. Tune in to Red Wolf Roundtable to get your fix on sports talk and news. Hello, welcome 
to this special Christmas edition of A State Sports Tape. I'm your host, Marquise, and I'm joined with Jordan Moore and Ella Jane Britt. Now, in this segment, um, in this segment, I'm going to talk about who's the scroogiest sportscaster. Now, I want to see Ella. You Personally, I have two. Probably my number one would be Paul Feinbaum. Second would be Stephen A. Smith. Mm. Paul Feinbaum being, he has his takes. And he's been known and been called out actually on TV for being a hypocrite. So what do you think about that? You know, that's definitely true. Paul Feinbaum's one of those guys. You know, um, he's just, you know, you, you say the word Paul Feinbaum and you see his face and you're like, man, that is someone I do not want to get into an argument with because he's, he's just that kind of guy. He's going to go at every single facet. So I think Paul Feinbaum makes a ton of sense. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> no, I personally do think that. And I think that because he's, he'll say one thing. But then he comes back to his next take, and it's saying something else. So I completely mm -hmm. think they're different. And like you said, I would not want to argue with him in any oh, shape, no. form, or fashion. <laughs> Same goes for Stephen A. Smith. Those two people, I feel like even if you were saying the sky was blue or the sky was green, <laughs> they wouldn't agree with you. Like, mm -hmm. you cannot mm -hmm. get them to change their ways. No. You, you really couldn't. And that's the glory of those, of those two guys. Now, whenever, you, whenever, whenever I saw this question, my mind immediately went to two people. And they weren't those two people, believe it or not. Mine went to the guy who hates everybody except for Michael Jordan, and that is Skip Bayless. Oh, that guy that guy is a clown sometimes, and, and he definitely is a Scrooge. And, you know, I also thought Christopher Mad Dog Russo. I love the Mad Dog, but, man, can he be a Grinch sometimes. But I think that I think that my Scroogiest sportscaster is a guy who's relatively new. I don't even know if he's been on anything in, in the recent times because people might have just hated him this much. <laughs> he was on first take a lot whenever Stephen A. was gone for a couple of months last year. And whenever I think of the Scroogiest, you know you had to have messed up. And you know you had to have been the biggest hater and been one of my least favorite people to listen speak, period, if you were on there a couple of times and I still don't like you to this day. And that is glorified bench writer Ryan Hollins. I cannot stand that guy. <laughs> and he has got to be the Scroogiest sportscaster, in my opinion. You look at him and you're like, man, this guy's going to have some stupid takes. And he walks into that studio and you are proved 100% right. I mean, he is a hater. He has no knowledge of any of the sports that he speaks on. He speaks only of his experiences, and his experience were riding the bench in the NBA. This guy has got to be the scroogiest broadcaster I've ever seen. I would love to say, like, having those experiences do make you stand out, but mm -hmm. yeah, if you rode the bench, you've been there to see those moments, but you never actually experienced them. And I think also, like, being one of the Scroogeys, being one of the most well-known of, like, you like to argue and everything like that does make you stand out, but it does necessarily, in my opinion, not give you the best reputation for being a great sportscaster. Mm -hmm. I think it gives you a very opinionated sportscaster. Yeah, for sure. And I think that there are a lot of people that, that kind of fall into that same blanket. You know, um, you know, for, for the two people that I talked about, Skip Bayless, you know, I would call him probably second place in Scroogeys just because he – it's not as much that he is, you know, inherently a big Scrooge. It's just that he's so much of a hater. It's like, so you know, you, you watch Skip and Shannon, and you're like, you know, Shannon, I understand his argumentative pieces. He says this player's not as good as this, place, the, this player. But you look at Skip, and it's not saying this player's better than this player. It's like, this player sucks. I hate him so much. His play style is atrocious. I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. It's like, bro, he's doing his job. He's playing a game. Like, like you don't have to hate every single person that you think is not doing such a good job right now and then mad dog mad dog just has one of those voices like you know you hear him on radio in the morning and you just hear mad dog and you're like man i just want to punch this guy in the face like he's just got that kind of voice to him oh, yeah. and you know mad dog he's a great analyst uh with what he does he's got one of the best radio stations in the world on sirius xm with with mad dog sports radio um but Man, oh man, does you, you just hear his voice and you immediately go, man, I just, I, I don't want to agree with anything this guy says. Yeah, about you, uh, Skip Bayless, like, it always got my nerves every time, like, for instance, LeBron. Mm -hmm. He all, every time LeBron do something good, Skip Bayless is always going to say, going to put him down. Like, every player, like, for KD, he always going to have something to say. And like, it gets on my nerves, like, he's like, why can't you just say somebody do good for a change instead of always trying to start something with every other player because you don't like them. I wholeheartedly believe in the, like, confidence sandwich that you have. You mm -hmm. have one good thing, bad thing in the middle, one good thing again. You still are pointing out their weaknesses, but then again you're pointing out the good things that they've done. Oh, yeah, for sure. Good for. 
Yeah, Skip is, even though we're racking on him a lot and we're talking about it being Scroogeist, I mean, you look at the shows that he's done and the things that he's done in his career, he has some of the most iconic moments of all time. I mean, he is sports casting whenever you think about his show. You know, you think about first take that he did originally with Stephen A. Smith, and now you look at Skip and Shannon, and, you know, he's got some of the most iconic moments on SportsCenter, on ESPN, on any of these platforms that he's on. I mean, Skip Bayless is that guy, and he's that guy for a good reason. He knows a lot about the sports. It's just whenever you look at what he says about players, that's what brings him to the scroogiest. But, like, all of these sportscasters that we're mentioning, aside from Ryan Hollins, that guy's garbage. But all of the other sportscasters, like, they they have amazing things about them, too. And uh, I, I think especially Stephen A. Smith, you know, you look at him, he, he might not know the most about every single sport that he talks about, but he comes in and he gets a big paycheck and there's a reason he gets a good paycheck and he's he gets really a big paycheck. He, does, like he's he is. He's confident. He's confident. He That's is. Exactly Absolutely. That's exactly what I was going to say. And, and, you know, he deserves that. And uh, I, I think that, it, and I think it was the same with Scrooge. You know, at the end of the movie um, or at the end of the story, you know, he finds that spirit and he finds the good in Christmas. And I think that we can find the good in every single one of these sports broadcasters. I completely agree with that. I really think that's a good idea because like, that's what those people are known for. That is giving them what they need. And some people enjoy that. Some people really do agree with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To me, it's what we need in sports. Like, yes, it gets annoying with Stephen A. Smith and all them, but at the same time, you also need that type of person to – that for that bad view of sport. Yeah, you look at you look at what we've done. Like this whole setup is because of what they've pioneered. Is because of the Stephen A. Smith. Is because of the Skip Bayless. Like if we don't have those Scrooges in our life, then then what is sports broadcasting it's right now? It's honestly almost like having a coach, like where they point out the bad things, so uh, like players and different people can work on what they need to. Absolutely. Well, that's all we have for this segment. We'll leave you around right back with more A-State Sports to take right after this. ASU TV, shows like Red Wolf Roundtable, ASU TV News, West Side Football, and more. Gain real life experience while doing what you love. Get involved with ASU TV today. Here to deliver the latest news on A State sports, ranging from football, basketball, baseball, and more. I'm your host, Tristan Harlan, alongside your other host, Cooper Mouder. Red Wolf Roundtable is your local sports source. Tune in to Red Wolf Roundtable to get your fix on sports talk and news. Welcome to this special edition, Christmas edition of A State Sport Take. I'm your host, Jacob Tester, and in this segment, I'm joined by Stephen Pesco and Austin Sweat. Today, we're going to be talking about the Jolliest Athlete Award. Award, guys. Who have you brought to the table? So mine's a bit of a classic answer. It's not someone you know, obviously they're not currently playing, but I would go with Tim Tebow. He's someone who's always been known for his optimism and his like joy as he you know goes about playing football. Obviously, you know he has his religion, which Puts him, which I think gives him a lot of his joy. But I think he, regardless of like how people agree with that or don't, he tends to just spread it, spread that joy around and just be happy wherever he goes. And I think that's just a big deal of like who we've known him as, just that optimistic player who just always goes out there and is going to be happy and do his best. Yes, Tim Tebow is a great answer, especially with his, uh, well, everything's off the field now, mm -hmm. but especially with the stuff he does with Make-A-Wish is a really big contribution to the community that he brings. And you mentioned the religious aspect is a great answer. Stephen, what did you bring? Um, I'm going to have to go with Stephen Curry. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a hmm. traditional answer or not. I think he's just a happy guy. Um, I, I saw this clip last night. They were walking out of the tunnel. Um, his son, Cannon, goes, Hi, Clay Thompson. And I think that's just a good reflection of like a good father figure, and it's going to be a good son one day, hopefully. And I think that's just a, it's a good thing about Steph Curry. 
And as for my answer, I want to list off a few names that I was considering before I reveal the true answer that I picked. Uh, I had Giannis Antetokounmpo as one. Uh, he's always in a great mood off the field when he's interviewing media, but I couldn't pick him after his incident with the ladder in the <laughs> Philadelphia 76ers game when he kicked it down. Uh, I considered uh, Nikola Jokic as well, oh. but he's always arguing with uh, officials and refs and seems to get some technicals every now and then due to those situations, so I couldn't pick him. Uh, I thought Luka Doncic was a possible answer, mm -hmm. but he's been known to rip his jerseys after missing free throws, so I couldn't go with him. Uh, I wanted to go with the Kelsey brothers with their podcast. They've brought a lot of interesting takes into the sports world as you get to see stuff that's behind the scenes. But the answer that I ended up choosing was Jamal Williams, the running back for the Detroit Lions. Uh, I picked somebody that is out of the media a lot, and he's not a superstar name as the people I mentioned before. But he's really been getting a lot of attention since the start of the summer training camp uh, where he interacts with fans a bunch. They bring him gifts and things like that that are anime related. And in turn, he signs stuff for them. And so it's kind of like this back and forth go. He's always in a great mood. Uh, after their game versus the Vikings, he just had a gift bag full of stuff that fans brought to him. And he's just skipping and jollying around on the sideline. He's always in a great mood. So I felt like I should bring an underdog kind of under the table name to this party. Oh yeah, that's definitely I, I definitely love that pick. I mean I, I he he's my he's one of my run backs in my fantasy. Mm -hmm. And so like it's I like the attention he's been getting. But I mean I remember I saw a TikTok that was like the Detroit Lions, uh they were talking about it was just a fun little thing, their favorite Pokemon. And he was like, Well I don't know it all this much and he like but he still came in with such a happy answer. Mm -hmm. And they had like a whole addition with him and just everything they promoted with him he's all i agree he is always just so happy and has that just air of joy with him which is just which i mean is like literally the thing of this you know he has such an air of joy that comes with him and i think that's so cool to have that vibe off people because it that's just someone you want to be around and i think this is what we're asking are these people who you know whether on or off the field would you want to be around them like at all times and as for your other answers I think a lot of them are more underlying just certain mm -hmm. things. Like for, you know, Giannis, that could have been just a very bad day for him. It could have, yeah, you know, well, there's, there there's are a lot like of things. like 10 free throws or something along oh, yeah. those lines. So nobody's going to be in a good mood after doing that. Yeah, and I think, I think no matter how happy and stuff you are, we mm -hmm. all have our moments of, you know, doing something in the heat of the moment that isn't necessarily mm -hmm. great. But I, 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 I really do like all those. Those are really good. Yeah, you're right. Uh, there are some bad days. I remember seeing clips of Steph Curry just throw his mouth guard like across the court, yeah, yeah. doing some disgusting stuff with this stuff that's been in your mouth. Like, come on, bro, just don't do that. But yeah, I think I like the Kelsey brothers pick. Um, I think they're gonna be they're starting to come onto the scene more, and people are starting to see how good they really are. Yeah, I like the Tim Tebow pick too. That's crazy that um, you know, he came from that Florida team, and he really was oh, the yeah. most positive guy from that Florida team back in. Uh, Whatever it was, but yeah. And then I had one more that I just remembered. It's Jason Kelsey and okay. the Eagles offensive line for dropping a Christmas album. Yeah. If you have not heard any of those songs on there, you should actually go check those out. So I exciting. don't like the Eagles, and I never will like the Eagles, but I can't ignore the fact that they dropped a Christmas album, and it's actually pretty decent. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's always so fun for teams to get involved in things like that. Yeah. I mean, there is an air of it that is marketing. But at the end of the day, you know, they're still doing something to have fun. Yeah. And if they're doing something in a fun way, in a unique way, because how many football teams drop a Christmas mm -hmm. album? I think that's very fun and unique. And I think that's just such a great angle to take if you are going to do something, whether for advertisement's sake or not. It's just so fun to have that uniqueness and that air of, again, positivity and joy. ASU TV, shows like Red Wolf Roundtable, ASU TV News, Westside Football, and more. Gain real life experience while doing what you love. Get involved with ASU TV today. Here to deliver the latest news on A-State sports, ranging from football, basketball, baseball, and more. I'm your host, Tristan Harlan, alongside your other host, Cooper Motor. Red Wolf Roundtable is your local sports source. Tune in to Red Wolf Roundtable to get your fix on sports talk and news.
Hello, and welcome to this special Christmas edition of A-State Sports Take. I'm your host, Ivan Rash. In this segment, I'm joined by Caleb Gullihorn and James Lowry. In this segment, we'll be discussing what is the best sport to watch on Christmas Eve or day. Gentlemen, what do you think? <sighs> well, for me, none other than NBA basketball. Gotta like, be. Only right answer. Like, I mean... Who is it much better to watch than LeBron James or Steph Curry? And even this year, we got the Memphis Grizzlies versus the Golden State Warriors on Christmas Day. Do I wish it was in Memphis? Yes, because I definitely would have went. But sadly, that's not the case. But it's going to be some great, exciting games to watch on Christmas Day. What better way than to open presents in the morning and get to watch some basketball in the evening? So, Yep. I mean, games usually start about 12 o'clock, and then they'll – Run all day, following one after another. You didn't even mention the, the best team that's playing on Christmas this year, though. Uh, Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks oh. finally get a Christmas Day game. Oh, yeah, that's true. Because they, they usually don't. It's always either the Lakers, the Bucks, Miami. Um, am I missing somebody? Golden State. Yeah, the, the Knicks get a lot of Christmas games in. Yeah, I, what, one thing that I really miss and I wish they would do again is the special Christmas Day jerseys. They, yeah, I think like 2018, maybe 2019 was the last year they did it. I think it was 18 that they had like the cursive letters mm -hmm. on the jerseys and Kyrie Irving hit that game winner against the Warriors. I mean, there used to be – it used to be something special, like playing football on Thanksgiving. It was, yeah. it was special to play basketball on Christmas Day. But I think now it just doesn't really feel the same. But yeah. it's to me, it's still it's still better because you're gonna have some. I think maybe one NFL game, maybe two if I'm mistaken. But I yeah, think it's just one because I remember a few years back, Alvin Kamara had six touchdowns against the Vikings on Christmas Day, mm -hmm. and he got fined because he was wearing red and green cleats in the game. Yeah, that that was very stupid in my opinion. But like my. Oh, there is, like you said, there's football games going on that day, and there's even some going on Christmas Eve, but the ultimate sport is to watch on Christmas is obviously basketball. I mean, what better way than to – it's just like the competition is different, the atmosphere is different, the fans are into it, and it's just a great thing to experience on a national – I guess, holiday like this. Oh, yeah. And I remember uh, the NBA commercial, the Jingle Bells commercial, where they had like five or six hoops and they had all those all-star oh, yeah. shooters uh, knocking down threes. And then on the last one, Bells, LeBron yeah. hit that alley-oop. Uh, and I just, th I just think there's so much creativity. Mm -hmm. The NBA obviously really cares about its Christmas Day games, and right. they make it a staple point of the season every single year. And I always make sure that I tune in and mm -hmm. watch all the games every single season. Ivan, do you watch basketball on uh, Christmas? No, I haven't. In fact, uh, truth be told, I didn't really know they did basketball on Christmas. Oh, yeah, it's very big uh, yeah. on Christmas yeah, but Day. I'll be honest. Uh, you guys have definitely got my interest. I, I think I'm definitely going to consider watching one of the basketball games this Christmas Day. You know, if I'm being honest... I, I kind of thought you, we all might have a, have a bit of a harder time with this segment, you know, uh, figuring out what would be the best sport to watch on Christmas Eve or day, because a lot of sports, uh, they don't really play around this time of year. That's very Not true. even sports like NHL or, or some of the other sports you see on, in the Winter Olympics. I mean, come on, people. <laughs> Those are winter sports you're talking about, and this is a winter holiday. What what better sport would be better to play on Christmas than one of those? That's valid. If, if you ask me, that that would be a really nice way to help get into the season somewhat, you know? Yeah, I get it. I definitely get his point there. But I guess because basketball, like the NBA and the NFL, are probably the most two watch sports here in North America, besides soccer. But um, it's just, I don't know, it's just something about watching basketball. I mean, I grew up watching it all my life, so it's kind of a tradition for me oh, yeah. and it, my it, family. And I think it just boils down to the person. I mean, no, watching the NBA isn't the only thing to do on Christmas, but it's still something that mm -hmm. a lot of families and a lot of people like to do. And so I just think, to me, that I personally, basketball is my favorite sport to watch. And so 
naturally whenever games are on, especially whenever we're going to have games back to back to back to back to back all day long, I'm going to definitely tune into that. Yeah, I'm – I'm more. What ex, what matchup are you excited most for? Uh for sure the the Mavs Lakers game. I oh, mean, yeah. a lot of my friends love LeBron and love the Lakers, and I've been looking looking forward to the Mavericks showing up and showing out. Uh, pretty much all season, although the Mavericks have failed to show up and show out several times throughout <laughs> the year already. Yeah, I'm excited for obviously Memphis and Golden State. Steph Curry, Ja. Just an all-around great matchup oh, yeah. all the time. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that game, too. You know, I've been to a few Memphis Grizzlies games, and with them going up against the team that Stephen Curry's on, it, it might be an interesting show to watch. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, that's all the time we have for this segment. We'll be right back with more A-State Sports Take right after this. ASU TV, shows like Red Wolf Roundtable, ASU TV News, Westside Football, and more. Gain real life experience while doing what you love. Get involved with ASU TV today. Here to deliver the latest news on A-State sports, ranging from football, basketball, baseball, and more. I'm your host, Tristan Harlan, alongside your other host, Cooper Mellon. Red Wolf Roundtable is your local sports source. Tune in to Red Wolf Roundtable to get your fix on sports talk and news. Hello and welcome to this special Christmas edition of A-State Sports Take. I'm your host, Easton John, and in this segment, I'm joined with Marquise Esters and Jacob Tester. And guys, we're going to be answering the question, what does A-State need for Christmas, A-State athletics in particular? Who is a lot? <laughs> Uh, the that's, that's the sort of question taken. we should have asked is, what is it that we don't need? Because mm -hmm. the list would be a lot shorter. Oh, yeah. But uh, there, this list can go very long in a bunch of sports. Uh, but it all comes down to the root of just some success. I'd like to see a little bit of joy in winning here. I mean, yeah. we, we had it a few years ago. I mean, we won it uh, in football. We won the conference not too long ago, and then we fell off the face of the earth, and then how, here we are trying to rebuild a program from scratch. So I'd like to see some success. You're talking about football in particular. Yes, for yes. football. Football in particular. Marquise, what do you think? I've been waiting for this segment all day. A-State needs a new offensive coordinator. I'm sorry, but we need a new <laughs> one. Not, not now. Oh, sorry, Marquise. I'm sorry for cutting you off. Every year since our offensive coordinator has been at A-State, our offense went – down. <laughs> Way down. Like, Our defense got better. Are we talking prices right? Yodeling guy bad? Like, or down Worse bad? than that. Worse than that. <laughs> wow. This is, this means something. This Worse, so we can't, we don't have a running game. Mm -hmm. Our offensive line, don't really have an offensive line. They're not good. They're not good. And a play calling has been atrocious. We need, I knew, we knew there a new is, voice. There is a lot of, like, not, it's not functioning. It's not like mm -hmm. a flowing river. River, yeah. sorry. For crying out loud, I will run the offense if they, if they <laughs> want me to. So non-football related, because I, I know football is our favorite sport here, but what do you think outside of football? What baseball. New baseball uh, I think the baseball program needs an overhaul. Yeah, like, I, th it was just bad. I mean, we had the uh, A-State sports uh, announcer come in here and talk to us, and he said even for him it was kind of difficult to – really stay focused during those long road trips mm -hmm. when they just wouldn't win. And it is like nothing in that A-State's baseball program is successful right now, whether it's the coaches, the players, any surrounding pieces for it. There's just been no success. So I think it needs to be overhauled and just rebuilt completely. Like, like to, we, I don't think we can leave anything. Everything's yeah. got to go. To me, with, with baseball, what got to start is a new baseball facility. Because mm -hmm. it's one of the, one of the worst stadiums yes. in Sunbelt in the country. 
And you see what a football like this, like football facilities get, bring players in. Mm-hmm. For baseball, nobody wants to come to A State play because no. most of the high school baseball fields in Jonesboro mm-hmm. is better than what A State has right now. And I I've played baseball all throughout my life, and when I saw that baseball field, the grass was it was the grass was yellow throughout the whole season. Like that's just that can't happen. I mean that's just that's not appealing to the people that are watching on ESPN Plus. You know. So what else? I mean, we, we're skipping on basketball. Let's let's talk about basketball ooh, ooh. for a little bit. Basketball. Yeah, men's, women's and men's basketball. Men's. I think it's time for a new a, a change, a whole new change. Mm-hmm. Like, what we got now, it, I'm the type of person that I give them a chance. I give them about four good years, mm-hmm. and we still have not made enough progress to me. I said we need a new change. Mm-hmm. New head coach change? Yeah, new head coach. He- new head coach, Jacob? Uh, I'm going to go a little bit interesting. Uh, with the transfer portaling opening up, uh, I'd like us to keep some of our players. Oh, uh, I know losing North Shadow Mir was that pretty hurt. much inevitable. Yeah. It, uh, everyone expected that. I'm not mad at him losing for that. But for Desi Sills, I'm a little bit upset because mm-hmm. he didn't upgrade that much. He just went to Kansas State. And he's not even – yeah, he's and not even so starting. If we're going to lose these players, I'd like us to try and get some in return yeah. that have – Proven past. Like, there's got to be some power five schools mm-hmm. that have some bench players that are not happy with their situation. Mm-hmm. They want more playing time. Mm-hmm. We can offer them more playing time. So I want us to either keep some of our players or be able to bring some more in. What about women's basketball team? What do you think? Uh, Destiny, think Destiny Rogers has, has came into this situation and has been a fantastic coach, mm-hmm. I think. But there's just that – I think that one thing that we need – is just one, just little, maybe just a defensive player, maybe just that one piece. They're missing. I, they have everything. Izzy Higginbottom is an, a fantastic player. She came from Mizzou, and that was a great pickup by Coach Rogers. But ju- I think it's just w- that one simple piece, and that is just defense. You know, what do you think? That's the same here. Cause like, I remember times where, like, former coach, like for A State, Brian Brewer, like, he, uh, A State always had like good seasons every right. year in women's basketball. I think when they go, if they get that one player that can play defense mm-hmm. and can be that defensive leader, yeah, I feel like this team will take this team to new heights. Now, I'm going to go on a little rant here. Please. Please. I've been waiting for this. So, I think what Arkansas State Athletics needs is a f- solid fan base. Yes. Big time. I had the opportunity to go watch the fraternity basketball tournament. Okay. There were more people at that fraternity basketball game. There, there were more people there than the football games this year. Let's talk. Uh, there were. I can't blame them for that. One. Football <laughs> game. I don't care. And the basketball. T- and and there was. Uh, and the student section for the basketball games is atrocious. Mm-hmm. Like you go to a fraternity basketball tournament, and you you see that, and you say, hey, let's go to that instead of the basketball game. That is a higher level of athletes. And it's, I mean, I know the frats think they're good, but it's just like, like you choose that over a men's or a women's basketball game. I, I don't understand. And then also, the order of the pack, tons of people, tons. Mm-hmm. And what, where were they? Week one, out in the pines, the not pines. coming in the game <laughs> and sitting out there and doing their own thing. I get it. The sport, you don't want to go watch football. You want to have fun with your friends in the pines. But you are going to a football game to support your university and your team. And you decide to choose fun over support. And I don't understand that. And going into this, I'm going to say this. There needs to be a change with the Pines. Seriously. Because we need to get more students into this, into this in the arena and yeah. into the stadium. Because it's embarrassing when we're on ESPNU and there's nobody in the freaking arena or s- stadium. It's just unbelievable how you could choose to, ha- to go in. I'm sorry, but you could go into the Pines, go to the, f- go to the stadium, and not enter into the game and stay out in the Pines and have fun. I know what you got. I, we, you, we all know what, we're, what I'm talking about. Oh, yes. Having oh, yes. fun. I'll have fun yes. It's just so frustrating that we're all on TV and you decided to go have fun and then leave. It's just, it does not make sense. I think the last time like, the fans actually came when, for basketball-wise, when Grant McCaslin was a head coach. Mm-hmm. Like, he went out to talk to like, the sororities, like, went out to, like, mm-hmm. to bring the fans in, and that worked. Mm-hmm. I think now, it's like, the coaches we've got now, 
it's not so much. Yeah. And it's kind of hurting. Like, when A-State have fans, mm -hmm. good things happen for A-State. Exactly. I know we're not winning as much. But if we were there to support them, maybe they would get that fire mm -hmm. in their stomach to win a more game. more players exactly. to come in. Jacob, what do you think? I mean, it's a two-part system. Uh, I really like the point that you brought up, that the coaches aren't as involved with getting the students into the games. But it's completely on the students to show interest into it. Oh, yeah. You mentioned that they're at the Pines. We're lucky if they're even there. The, this college has a bunch of students that live in a very local area. They just up and leave on the weekends. They're, they're not mm -hmm. here. Go, drive by the freshman dorms on the weekends. Mm -hmm. The parking lot's practically empty. There's nobody here on the weekends. So even the people that the percentage, very minimum percentage that we keep here on campus don't go into the games, we have a majority of them just leaving. They're just going home. Oh, and, yeah. and watching the game at home. And it's just and no, what, they don't watch the game at home. They, they don't yeah. even see that. This they don't watch me, the though. game. Like, we want to be a, like contend for championships, but – where are the fans at? The fans like want to compete. Fans need to show out and come out and support the teams. That's how championship, championship teams mm -hmm. win. We and need I'll, a lot. I'll, I'll say this to wrap it up. Central Arkansas had more fans in their student section when we played them in basketball than any other sporting event that we've had this year. And that's all I'll say for this to wrap this up. That's all the time we have for this segment. Thanks for watching the A-State Christmas special edition of A State Sports Take. On behalf of Mr. Sullivan and his sports casting class, we'd like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays. Thank you for watching.